Hello, this is Pastor Mike Jones with Life Together in Christ Daily Devotional. And today we'll be looking at Amos chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Amos chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. And I believe this is a, a word um, that is for our church today, for all uh, followers of Jesus Christ. I believe it's for our nation uh, at least for those who uh, suggest that they follow God and are fo followers of Jesus, uh, which that makes up over 50% of our population in the U.S. And so this scripture was originally spoken to God's people, Israel. And I believe in this scripture, it reveals the heart of God and uh, his desires for us. So let's uh, take a moment and pray before we look at Amos chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Lord, we ask as we prepare to look at the scripture, Lord, that just as you spoke to your people, the Israelites, Lord, we, we pray that you would speak to us today through this scripture. Lord, that through your Holy Spirit, you would give us understanding of what your intent is for us today as we pick up these scriptures and read them, Lord, that you would give us understanding and that we would be able to apply these to our lives today. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that gives us insights and gives us life. In your name we pray, amen. So our scripture today is from Amos. Uh, he was a prophet, a farmer, uh, that was called to prophesy to God's people. And here is his word. Hear this word, Israel, this lament I take up concerning you. Fallen is virgin Israel, never to rise again, deserted in her own land with no one to lift her up. And so here, uh, God is referring to Israel. Uh, once is uh, the virgin Israel, the one who is faithful to God, uh, fallen is that virgin. So that indicates to us that uh, Israel, God's people, have been unfaithful. They have chased other things other than God. And so Israel is now fallen. It is in a place of unfaithfulness. Uh, she's fallen. She's deserted in her own land. There's no one that can help her, no other nation. And this is what the sovereign Lord says to Israel. Your city that marches out a thousand strong will only have a hundred left. Your town that marches out a hundred strong will only have 10 left. And so God is warning Israel that you may think you're strong. You may think that you have strength and that when you go out against other nations, uh, you will return with only a 10th of what you send out. You're not as strong as you think you are. And continuing on then with verse 4, this is what the Lord says to Israel, God's people. Seek me and live. Do not seek Bethel. Bethel was a place of false idols. And do not go to Gilgal. Uh, Gilgal was a place where the people worshipped God and abused, uh, prost they abused that worship of God. They also prostituted it. Uh, so here God says, seek me and live. Don't go to Bethel, that place of fall idols. Do not go to Gilgal. Do not journey to Beersheba, another place where uh, worshiping God was prostituted. For Gilgal will surely go into exile and Bethel will redu be reduced to nothing. These places that you went and worshiped false idols and prostituted your faith, uh, these are going to be nothing. Again, God says in verse 6, seek the Lord and live. He will sweep through the tribes of Joseph like a fire. It will devour them, and Bethel will have no one to quench it. And so out of this first part of Amos, we see Israel, God's people who have been unfaithful. They have put other things before God. They are pursuing false idols. And in our world today, we can pursue false idols. Anything that we put before God, whether it's hopes or dreams or work or business or friendships or our leisure or retirement, anything we put before God becomes an idol. And God refers to them as false idols because 
God is the only one that can give life and really lead us into the abundant life. But if we look at our idols, those things we, we desire more than God, uh, they're false because they won't really give us life. And God says, seek, seek me and live. God is telling us to seek him first and foremost, and he will lead us into the abundant life. He will order all the other things in our lives and give it, put it in proper perspective. Not that any of those are bad because they're not. They can all be good family, leisure, retirement, hopes, dreams, work, business. All those things are good. But when we put those ahead of God, uh, they won't give life. It's only God who will give us life in the midst of doing those things. So if we seek God first, he will give us life. And so this was a very appropriate scripture for me today. Uh, Janice is retiring in May. And um, as she retires, we begin to dream and think about the future and determine, trying to determine what is God's will for us. And in the midst of trying to determine God's will for our future, uh, this scripture really brought hope because it said, don't worry about the future. Don't worry about where I'll lead you or what your next step will be, but seek me first. And this is what I heard God saying to me, Mike, seek me first and I will give you life. And so I'm putting my trust in that promise that if I seek God first, he will give me life. He will lead me into the most abundant life that as Janice and I seek him and try to discern the future, all we have to worry about is seeking him and he will lead us into the future, into the most abundant life, into the next chapter. And so uh, my brothers and sisters today, Wherever you're at in your life, may we seek God first in our lives, and may we receive life in the midst of that. Seek the Lord and live. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you uh, that as we seek you, you will order all of our priorities, that you will set the future before us and lead us in right paths. And Lord, I thank you for the amazing promise that as we seek you, you will give us life. And Lord, it reminds me of Jesus's, Jesus has saying in John chapter 10, verse 10, I've come so that they might have life and have it abundantly. And Lord, I'm thankful that as we seek you, as we seek Christ, as we seek the Holy Spirit, Lord, that you will lead us into the most abundant life. May we experience that today and this week and in the future. In your name we pray. Amen. God loves you and wants the best for you. And I love you too. Have an awesome day. <laughs>